So autism has been in the news a lot lately, and many times the story has a very heartbreaking component to it, where the family uh, who loves their child greatly has, uh, has a child who uh, doesn't speak verbally and is often misunderstood, in part because of that lack of communication. And what, what you'll often hear that's, I think, especially heartbreaking is the uh, parents will talk about all the things they tried to do to help their child and how eventually, they're, usually it's a son, it's four to one, male to female, their son uh, finally became so violent and so difficult uh, to control that he had to be restrained and placed in a home or an institution because they couldn't handle him anymore in the school or in the home. What you hear from the parents and teachers is that the um, child or the, their son would suddenly become uh, violent or would suddenly have a meltdown, uh, that it would appear to come out of nowhere. One moment the child would look perfectly calm, the next moment the teacher's calling for help to restrain the child. So what was intended to be a very good productive learning experience, uh, maybe the teacher thought the child looked um, receptive and was pushing him a little bit because she knows he, he did this last week. Why isn't he doing it now? He appears noncompliant. She pushes and with all good intentions, and it turns into disaster. Meanwhile, we've had the privilege of talking with several people on the autism spectrum who later acquire the ability to speak or type. And they'll say, well, before I began my self-injurious behavior, biting myself or lashing out to others, I was, getting growing, I was growing increasingly frustrated. It never came out of the blue. It was always uh, frustration and stress building up to the point where I just couldn't take it anymore, and I lost it. I lost control. Now, the, so we have a teacher who sees the person looks perfectly calm, and we have an individual who can't communicate how frustrated they're getting, and on the outside, they look perfectly calm. So. This is an opportunity for technology to jump the communication gap here. There's a chasm in communication between what the autistic person is feeling and what is being seen on the outside. So we are developing sensors that will hopefully be very comfortable and sociable that individuals can choose to wear if they wish to communicate to trusted people something about their internal feelings. And the idea is that if they can communicate um, perhaps that they're getting increasingly stressed on the inside, even when that's not what it looks like on the outside, then a teacher could say, gee, you know, Johnny looks fine, but his, his internal state is looking increasingly stressed. I wonder what's bothering him. Uh, maybe it's that fan sound in the background that's irritating him, because many autistic people have hyper-perceptual abilities, hyper-acute auditory uh, listening skills, and a sound that we don't even notice might be very painful to them. Uh, or something else in the environment might be really driving them nuts, or maybe they have an excruciating pain medical condition that is going undiagnosed, or toothache or something. So because they can't speak about their problems, uh, we can, um, th this is often misunderstood or misdiagnosed. And so we would like to give them alternate channels to communicate. And the technology right now is getting very close to where we think we can give people something as easy to wear as a wristwatch that can uh, help them to communicate this information and hopefully uh, dramatically change their quality of, of life and opportunities to learn and, and uh, have relationships with other people.